welcome to today's Tuesday talk. I am so excited to be here with my special guest, Ben Schwartz. You guys, you're not even going to believe this. The synchronicity of this interview is absolutely amazing with the 8-8 Lions Gate happening this week and with the energies that are happening out there on the planet. Tonight, we are going to be talking about ancestral healing, healing ancestral traumas. And my guest, Ben Schwartz, is an expert in the field of energy psychology. Ben specializes in trauma treatment and coaching for entrepreneurs. He's also the creator of Ancestral Trauma Release Techniques, or ATRT for short. And uh, so this, this um, technique is an energy psychology used to clear ancestral traumas and the inherited, inherited negative patterns that they create. I am so excited to have this conversation tonight. I feel like it is just so absolutely timely. Ben, welcome to Tuesday Talks. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here, Lynn. Love Absolutely. talking about it. So yeah, very glad to be here. Yeah, exactly. Ben and I came out of um, some similar coaching work for our businesses. And since then, we've been connecting. I've been watching some of um, the work that he's been doing and, and have been absolutely amazed. I know for myself, I've been on my own journey to heal um, ancestral trauma. And I've, I've actually gotten to the other side of it recently. And for all of us that are struggling with family baggage. This is, this is such an important topic. Ben, tell me a little bit about why you think your technique is so amazing and how it's been helping people. I think really there, there's nothing um, that mysterious about the, the, the process that we came up with. Uh, I want to give a little credit or a lot of credit to my partner and, and colleague, Eva Malinowski, who I, uh, I created this with, and we both had a background of, of psychotherapy and healing and coaching and have very similar family histories um, in Europe. Uh, around World War II, a lot of, a lot of intense history for both of us, um, me with family in the Holocaust, her with family in the Polish resistance. Um, both sort of on the other side of the Nazis. And so there's an interesting synchronicity in our stories. But our own personal work, each of us in working through some of our own family traumas, really is, is a lot of what led us to this. And as we collaborated on developing this technique, we, we use some of the tools that she uses a lot in her work with clients, combined with a lot of the work that I use with my clients. And it was just a really perfect synergy of, uh, of techniques. Um, so I, I'd like to maybe demystify it a little bit, you know, um, up front, and then maybe we can get into a little bit of ex something experiential, you know. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. So, so tell us, tell us about this technique. Go ahead and, and demystify it for us. I'm super curious. So I'll do my best because it's, um, it's, it's maybe a lot to pack into a, a short time here, but uh, there's, there's, yeah, there's two components here. One is, as with any, I think just about any ancestral trauma healing work that you'll find across cultures, um, and you know, you would look to any indigenous culture to see that, that there's always a deep reverence for ancestors and family lineage and uh, a way to stay very uh, actively connected to them. Uh, regardless of those cultural differences, I think across the board, there's an altered state of consciousness involved in some way. And some there's, you know, there's a, there's a trance state induced through dance or singing or shamanic processes, rattling, drumming, um, or simply praying and, and setting intention and doing ritual, lighting candles and having an altar and all of these different things that are, you know, vary a lot from culture to culture, but have some common threads, right? 
Um, but then in our Western culture, we, we have relatively little um, available to us to, to do that. We're not taught how to do that. So uh, you, you could take the attitude that um, that's off limits to you unless you join some culture that, that adheres to those practices and learn all those traditions. Or you could tell yourself that this is a universal truth. We all have ancestors. Our ancestors are real. And from a quantum perspective, time is not a linear thing. It's a multi-dimensional thing and that all times, all, all dimensions, all timelines, past, present, and future, all coexist in the, in the present moment. Mm. And those who have gone before us in our lineage still exist. Yeah. And uh, even in our Western culture, in our Western um, you know, religions, we, we believe in that generally. Most people do in some way, but we just don't have ways to enact that or to, to make those connections. So this process is just really a way to guide people into an altered state where they get into a deeply relaxed state. It's very you know, similar to a hypnotic process. Uh, where the intention is to connect to an ancestor that holds a pattern that is showing up for you in your life as a block or a difficulty or fear or whatever the case may be. And then when you're there in, in that altered dimension, that alternate dimension, uh, making contact with them, um, the facilitator or therapist would then kind of mediate that conversation with your ancestor and do whatever needs to be done to um, either complete something that that's not completed, help heal something that's unhealed, release something either for them or for yourself or for both simultaneously. Wow. And that part of it is where we might use EFT, which a lot of people know as tapping. While you're there with your with your eyes closed, usually lying down, and you're still in that altered place, but you're you can move and you can tap along. Um, as you're in, in a way, you know, in the tapping world, we call this surrogate tapping, when one person taps on behalf of another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, when I'm raising my kids, for example, they were really little too young to tap along with me when they're upset, I, I might just tap on me for them and just voice their feelings for them and they would still get the effect of that. And you can do that for anybody and you can do that for your ancestors as well. Then how does this tie into this notion that we've been hearing about a lot lately about healing seven generations forwards and backwards? Yeah, we, uh, we, we, we refer to that, uh, that phrase sometimes. I think mm -hmm. it's, um, I know that that, that that comes from certain Native American cultures that uh, um, speak of seven generations and, and all of your, your decisions, you should consider seven generations. And my understanding, and I, I hope I'm, I have this right, uh, is that they mean seven generations forward and back in total. Mm -hmm. So your sphere where you're in the middle, uh, three generations in front of you and three behind you. So back to your parents, grandparents, great grandparents, and forward to your children and grandchildren, great grandchildren is what you should always be mindful of. And you are in the center. So three yeah. and three plus you is yeah. seven. I believe that was was sort of the the original, but however you want to take it, uh, seven generations back is it's it's all just a question of what to include in your field of awareness, right? And so here's an an interesting thing is to consider how many generations, well, how many people are in your lineage because they increase exponentially as you go back, and this is something we don't often really. Hmm grasp or really think about the, the number of people that stand behind you. Um, so part of the, the little you know, guided meditation I'd like to do will, will help uh, appreciate that a little more. But just to give an example, if we go back, uh, let's see, 
if we go back to, I believe, our fifth or sixth great-grandparents, we're already around 500 people. Yeah, that's amazing. 500 people, and that's not just, those aren't just relatives. Those are in your direct line of parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, great-great-great-grandparents. 500 of them it is pretty astounding. It's kind of hard to fathom, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, you know, and especially like when we're calling our ancestors to stand with us, you know, to support us, to, to actually realize that and to realize that all of this energy, all of this ancestral energy has our back. Yes. Yeah. Mm, that's powerful. Yeah. That's really powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about your work before we get into the meditation. I'm super excited that you are so willing to guide us on this journey today because I know all of us are going to benefit from it. But why is it that we are have, why is it right now it feels so important to clear these old ancestral patterns that aren't serving us? Well, they, you know, there's been a movement in the, the healing world and in the therapy world toward uh, understanding trauma in the last decade or so. And uh, that's, that's been my specialty for a while now. And, and it's, EFT is, is one of my main modalities, and it's especially good for trauma. Mm. You know, when, you, when you use it clinically and very specifically, it, it's amazing the, the types of trauma that can be rather quickly cleared with that technique. And so I, I'm a big fan of working on trauma for pretty much everyone. Regardless of what you present with, whether it's anxiety or relationship issues or money blocks or whatever, you can always trace it back to some form of trauma. And that's really the root of everything. But sometimes you work through your present life's traumas and you do all this great work and all this great clearing and you feel like there's no more baggage there and yet you might still feel that something has a grip on you and it's elusive and you don't know what it is. And in those cases, it's almost always pointing toward ancestors' trauma. So like for me, one of my biggest challenges in this lifetime has been overcoming certain types of fear and anxiety that really manifested for me in my work as a therapist and had everything to do i came to find out about my grandfather that died in the holocaust and um, i was experiencing the same what i believe to be the same fear grief, um, anxiety, worry that he would have experienced when he was taken away from my father and his family, the first to be taken away, the only one to, to be taken away and disappear, never to return. Jeez. And so, you know, he's, he's the patriarch of the family, very loved, very popular, very, you know, respected person in the community. And in that experience, he had no way to communicate to them. He had no closure with them. He was just taken. And they were left without a father, without anyone to take care of them. They all ended up going you know, to labor camps and concentration camps, and um, most of them survived um, to tell the tale. But he was taken, and I was identified with him. So my fear was, I'm going to be ruined. If my business fails, I'm going to fail my family. I won't be able to provide for them. And it was on, in a, on, a, on a catastrophic kind of level that I would, that this fear would sometimes get a hold of me, where it was this deep fear of humiliation, of being shamed, of being completely, you know, uh, taken away from my family. My family would be left with nothing. Yeah, and it wasn't rational, and it didn't, it didn't point to anything in this lifetime that could explain it. I didn't grow up with that kind of trauma. So when I went there, and I sort of identified with my grandfather and tapped 
I had someone help me do it because I needed that second person to kind of do it with me. Okay. Tap through that, this huge amount of grief and emotion came out of me that I'd never felt before about him ever. Mm. And that was such a catharsis that cleared so much. It was really as if I was being the surrogate uh, person for him to heal that emotional pain that he never got to heal. That's how yeah. I... As you were struggling with, um, or you were experiencing this stress and anxiety, how did, when, how did you know that it was your grandfather? How did you identify that he was the family member that you were taking on that energy yeah. from? Well, that's, that's an excellent question. And this is the question that comes up for anyone who's trying to approach this, mm. this kind of issue. For me, it was mostly intuitive, and that's often how it comes. You might, it might come to you through synchronicities or dreams or intuitions or anything like that. Um, I knew that the Holocaust trauma of my family had to be having an effect on me. That was just sort of an assumption that I made. And then it was just, uh, I began by exploring, you know, tapping about my father's experience, and there's plenty there too because he was a child at that time. He was, he was about 14 when he went through those experiences, 14, 15. And, uh, but for some reason, my, just looking at my grandfather's picture, I felt this just strong emotion, this strong heart connection, even though I didn't know that much about him. It was sort of just an unexplainable resonance, is how I could describe it, that I felt with him. Okay. It just intuitively just went there. I, I can understand that. I mean, I, I, I have a lot of intuitive downloads that come to me. And, you know, for those of, of you out there that are listening to this and you're not yet in the position of really tapping in and trusting your intuition, you might say, well, maybe you're just guessing. But once we begin to really trust in the intuition, there is just, I don't know how to put it, but besides just saying it's this deep knowing, like in every cell of your body. So I want to encourage all of you to just really trust that what you're feeling, what you're, what you're associating with those feelings, trust that it's true because 98% of the time it really is. And I would add that, that it's the emotion that is mm -hmm. one of the biggest signs that you are truly connecting with something real, you know? Um, and sometimes you don't know until you're doing the work, you know, you're doing the tapping or you're in the process of the ancestral trauma process that the emotion comes up. And that, you, know, you can't manufacture that. It's authentic when you're in that state and that emotion comes up, it's quite real. And that tells you that this is a real connection and, it, and it's in you. So that's when in doubt, follow the emotion. Um, so it began with intuition for me and it, then it led to the emotion that sort of confirmed it for me. And then the last confirmation of it was that my business then stabilized. The, the roller coaster that was putting me through these bouts of anxiety then evened out and the money flow and the income and the and the client flow just evened out. And so did my anxiety. Even when there would be a little bit of a dip, I didn't go into panic anymore. Mm. And then it's been years of, of that kind of uh, a new, new set point, you know? That's, it's such a powerful story. Um, and I, I just really appreciate you being so vulnerable and sharing it so authentically because, um, so many of us have these trapped, I call them hidden, hidden fears or, or um, trapped emotions within us that are, that are blocking all of our potential. And we're here on this planet with so much potential. And when we can really clear it and get out of our own way, that's when magic really begins to happen. And I, We've got to do. We've got to sit down and do the work, and and actually make time to do this healing work. So let's make some time right now, and um, I'd love for you to lead us through this meditation. I know it's going to be really powerful, and um, 
yeah, I just really want to encourage people to watch it a second time if um, if if you if you need to. Um, just use this as an amazing resource. Um, I'm really excited that you're going to be sharing this with us. Yeah, sounds good. So, so just a, a little um, ex quick explanation. This is not identical to what we would be doing if you were to be doing the full process where you'd connect with, if you were working on ancestral trauma, um, you can go into that either choosing to connect with a specific person like I did, or just setting an intention that you want to connect with somebody who's holding some pattern. Maybe you don't know who they are because we don't even all know our grandparents or great grandparents. And sometimes somebody will just show up. I had that happen with one time I did the process where it was a great, great grandfather on my mother's side that I know nothing about whatsoever, not a name, nothing. But I got a very clear experience in a very positive one. And you never know how someone's going to show up. Um, so this right now is going to be more geared towards uh, connecting with positive ancestors, meaning that there are those who die in trauma and maybe they're still working through those things, even in the afterlife is the way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's others that are on a more enlightened level, empowered, strong, positive, wise, balanced, ancestors who stand behind you who who have a lot of strength to offer you right now and that's what i really want to want this one to be about i love that and and i think that this is it's a wonderful resource for us to all just take with us especially in those times that we need our ancestors to have our back is to know that this is the ancestor who who's got that positive spin and can really give us the positive boost that we need. It's beautiful. I'm so, so excited. Okay. I, I can't wait to find out who comes <laughs> forward. Good. Let me get some water so I don't start coughing in the middle of it. Okay. So, um, so what we'll do like 10 minutes or a little less or? Sure. A little less maybe, but sure. However long it takes. I'll keep my eye on the, the clock. Okay, so just wherever you are, just get comfortable and sit in, you can lie down if you like, if you can, or you can just sit comfortably if you're on the ground or whatever feels balanced to you. Go ahead and close your eyes. Just begin to tune into the breath. Feel the whole body from the head to the feet. And as we go into this, let's just set an intention that we are connecting with our family lineage, with the positive aspects and strengths of our family lineage, and that we do so for the highest good of ourselves our family, and everyone involved. And just tuning into the breath, breathing into the belly as you inhale. Letting the shoulders relax, relaxing the face and the neck. And as you inhale, feel that energy and that breath coming directly into the heart at the center of the chest. Imagining the heart opening like a flower. Breathing in love, positive energy. Breathing out fear. Full deep breath, breathing into the heart. And releasing fear. Letting the body relax more and more with each breath. The 
heart expanding as you inhale. Breathing in love. Exhaling fear and tension. Body relaxing even more. Breathing into the heart. Releasing fear. And seeing above the crown, sensing a golden ball of energy. With your next exhalation, seeing that ball descending down through the crown of the head beginning to fill the body with a golden light, soothing and relaxing. Relaxing even deeper as that light descends down, mm -hmm. lower through the body, filling the upper body, the space of the heart, the whole torso. Filling up the lower half of the body. Everything relaxing as the whole body fills with light. Recognizing at all times, all dimensions, all parallel realities, past, present, future, all lifetimes, all exist in one eternal moment. Recognizing that those who have passed on from this physical world are just as real and just as present as they ever were. And seeing behind you a space opening up like a vast corridor or a big room. And first coming into focus, seeing standing behind you, behind each shoulder, your mother and your father. And standing behind your mother and your father are their parents, your four grandparents. Six people standing behind you. And looking further back behind each of your grandparents are their parents. Eight more. And now you have 14 people standing behind you, parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. And standing behind your great-grandparents, all of their parents, 16 more. And now there's 30 people standing behind you. And behind them, another set of parents. Stretching out behind you, filling that entire room with a crowd of people that are your own lineage. Your grandmothers and grandfathers who've gone before you, who've struggled through life with the same challenges, highs and lows, and now have moved on to another world. And tuning in to that crowd, recognizing that 
in those dozens and dozens of ancestors are so many people that have tremendous strength, tremendous wisdom, great beauty, great gifts. And they are aware of you. They want the best for you. And they are here for you. Feel them all standing there, sending positive energy to you, supporting you, cheering you on, seeing from a higher world the challenges that you face, the fears that you struggle with. They are all standing behind you, wanting you to succeed, taking pleasure in your victories, sending you love and positive energy. Allow your heart to open to that. Feel them holding you up, urging you on, because you are the living embodiment of this lineage. Hundreds of people, thousands of people. You're the one who's here now in this physical form. They want you to be happy. They want you to be fulfilled. They want you to face your fears. They want you to feel your power, to be a co-creator of your reality, to master this life. And everything you do is for yourself as well as for them because they are uplifted by you just as you can be uplifted by them. And just breathe that energy in to the heart. Feel your connection to the earth in this time and place. Feel their presence behind you. Acknowledge them for all of their trials and strengths and difficulties and efforts. Thank them for being there. And coming back to your body, feeling your heart, feeling your feet on the ground. Feeling yourself from the head to the feet, taking a few more breaths. Back to the awareness of your own time and place and the room that you're in. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Wow, that made me cry a little bit. Wow, oh, that was oh, very profound to have that group of people behind me. Really, um, you're absolutely correct. I've never thought about it in that proportion before. Mm. And um, yeah, I also, besides just the emotion coming through my eyes, I also felt a lot of um, vibration in my body as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, powerful. And the more you connect with that, the more you open up to that dimension, uh, the more real it becomes, the more energy you connect with when you go there. Yeah. Wow, that, that was amazing. And within there, within that, um, 
it was interesting because uh, I was able to, my parents are still alive, so I could see them behind me. And then of course I know my four grandparents quite well. And then I, well actually one of them has had passed before I was born, um, but she's always with me. Um, she's, I, I have her name, Evelyn. So um, we are very connected. And th but then behind her, behind them, there were my great grandparents who I, some of them I knew when I was a very small child. And then, bef you know, behind that, I didn't know who they were. It was, it was just their energy and their vibration. But um, in the process, I, I really, there were, there were two that really just like lit up for me, um, like as, as being beacons almost. Yeah, yeah, that's good to notice. You know, sometimes there'll be some that stand out that way. And, and at the same time, there might be others that stand out as um, the opposite, maybe those that seem a little more stuck or um, still experiencing some effects of some trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, so they might be those that you, you connect with in a different way. But it's well, so that's, that's an interesting point to notice that, to just start yeah, to, yeah. without judgment, without uh, thinking about it too hard, but just noticing the energetics that are coming through there. And since we were looking for the supportive um, family members, that's kind of, I just kind of really allowed myself to, to feel that support. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That was yeah. really special. Thanks for inviting me to do that. It's nice to be able to, to offer that. Now, one of the things you mentioned was that once you go through this meditative process, you often bring in the EFT to, to use it. Do you want to share anything about that, or is that just getting too complicated? Well, I don't know how much time you have to get into that, and it is a whole yeah. thing unto itself. But, okay, uh, good to know. A little complex to get into because there's so many, there's many versatile, you know, ways to use EFT, and this is another unique way to apply it. That's well, let's not go there today because our time is kind of coming, and we do want to wrap things up. But yeah. what can, how can Give us just a couple of tips so that after our viewers go through this experience, do you recommend that maybe they sit down and journal for a few minutes or, or what might they do to really embody um, I'm this I'm a big experience? fan of journaling and I think no matter what it is that you're doing as a healing process, journaling is a great way to make it more concrete and set intentions and, and get things you know, process more of it. So absolutely that. Pay attention to your dreams. Mm -hmm. um, sort of open mm -hmm. up to the possibility of allowing ancestors to communicate to you through your dreams. Um, can be very powerful. And to write down your dreams will encourage you to remember and be more conscious of those things. If you already do something like tapping um, and you feel some resonance for an ancestor like I did for, with my grandfather, if you're comfortable doing it, then then go there and tap about the feelings that you identify within you that you think has to do with them and their experience. And that can be another good avenue to, to, to follow. Would you um, recommend that people, if they, if they actually know uh, the physical, if they have a photograph of this ancestor, that they put it on an altar or anything I, like that? I was just going to say, absolutely. Um, uh, having some kind of an altar space where you have photographs of your ancestors, candles or incense or anything that, that is meaningful to you to just um, create a reverence for them and a respect for them and awareness of them, um, say prayers for them, see them at their, in their highest form and wish them well. Um, that's a very powerful, very, very positive thing to do for sure. Yeah. yeah I love yeah. it. 
Oh, wow. This is, this has just been such a great conversation today. I wish we had more time to just keep talking about it. But um, I want to ask you, is there any other thing that you feel is really important to leave our viewers with today? Well, I would just say one thing that I, that I didn't say earlier, and this um, is only that uh, it's still important to have boundaries, even in doing this work in another dimension with your ancestors. Yes. And that means boundaries for you and respecting their boundaries too. So just because you're meeting in some sp more spiritual sort of form in another realm doesn't mean you have to do whatever somebody, some other being wants <laughs> if you're not comfortable with it. And they also don't have to do anything with you if they don't want. So when we approach an ancestor and offer some form of healing, like, can I tap with you about this? If they say no, then that's no, you know, that they they need to be respected just as as you do so i would just throw that in there <laughs> yeah. yeah thanks for saying that i work with the plants here on the farm a lot and um it's it's the strangest thing to say to somebody but when i say you know when you're harvesting the plant for medicine always ask the permission and if you yeah. get a no just back off you know <laughs> they're like a plant telling me no. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah exactly Ben, how can our viewers uh, learn more about you, get more information about you? What's the best way for them to, um, to contact you or to learn more? Well, I'll just say real quick I, that uh, Eva and I are currently um, uh, unveiling a, a, a course in this process. It's, it's a certification course for practitioners that has three levels, but the level one that's starting in September, September 10th is for anybody. It's addressing money blocks um, in relation to ancestral traumas, and it's for anybody to do. So it's um, about a five-week experience, and you can find out if you contact me. But the easiest way to connect with me is through my website, and it's tappingcoach.com. It has a hyphen between tapping and coach, so T-A-P-P-I-N-G hyphen coach.com. And um, when you go there, you'll also see a, a little mini course, an EFT, little mini, mini video course. Um, if you uh, want to you know, put your name in, you'll get that immediately, and, and then you'll be connected, and you'll get my, my information about all of this uh, subject as well. That's really great. And if you guys um, haven't worked with EFT, or if you need a refresher course, Absolutely. Check that out because it is such a powerful modality in moving emotion out of the body and uh, just really resetting um, our, our self back to like our factory defaults almost. Um, yeah. Great. So that is tapping-coach.com. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Perfect. I'll add that to the comments as well. Okay. Ben, it's been a pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you so much for being a guest on Tuesday Talk. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Lynn. All right, everybody. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks. And until then, I hope you are well and many blessings. See you soon.